The approach to the NIH is very similar to what we do with other emerging infections. It's a four-pronged approach. First, to study the fundamental knowledge of the virus itself, as well as the host response to the virus. The second is to help develop diagnostics and assays. The third is to characterize and test therapeutics. And the fourth is to develop safe and effective vaccines. Speaking of the first, fundamental knowledge of the virus and what the virus is capable of doing. We've done a number of studies now that have informed how we're approaching therapeutics and vaccines. For example, the precise molecular structure of the spike protein, which is that part of the virus which actually gives it its name, coronavirus, because of these spikes that stick out from the virus. That is the way the virus binds to cells in the body. This has been precisely delineated by NIH scientists and those that we fund. Second, the demonstration of the precise receptor whereby the virus binds to cells in the body, allowing it to enter and cause disease. In addition, we develop animal models. We do natural history studies, such as understanding the virus in different demographic groups. Second is the development of diagnostics and assays. We need and we will get within a reasonable period of time based on a major investment in the RADx protein uh, program, diagnostics that are point of care, simple, precise, um, sensitive, and specific. We hope by the end of the fall and into the early winter, we will have these for wide distribution. Third, the development and characterization of drugs. You've all heard of the first successful randomized placebo-controlled trial of a drug called remdesivir, which was used in hospitalized patients with lung disease. It showed a statistically significant but modest impact on decreasing the time to release from the hospital, namely faster recovery. In addition, this drug is now being used in combination with another drug that blocks the inflammatory In plasma, hyperimmune globulin, other drugs, monoclonal antibodies, as well as other immune-based therapies. Fourth, the development of safe and effective vaccines. The hallmark of all really defining responses that we have to virus diseases. If you look at the history of viral diseases, it is generally vaccines that put the nail in the coffin of these types. We are now mounting a major effort in which we're collaborating with industry and public-private partnerships to get vaccine trials that are developed that harmonize with each other. In other words, to have multiple trials in which we have common questions that are being asked, common laboratories that are being looked at, common data and safety monitoring board, and common primary, secondary, and tertiary endpoints so that the data can be compared from one to another. You've probably heard that one of those vaccines and there are more than one. There are several that are moving along at various paces. One of them will enter phase three study in July. This is one that has already shown in preliminary studies some very favorable response in the animal models that were developed. There will be others that will follow one month, two months, three months later. Although you can never guarantee at all the safety and efficacy of a vaccine until you actually test it in the field, we feel cautiously optimistic based on the concerted effort and the fact that we are taking financial risks, not risks to safety, not risks to the integrity of the science, but financial risks to be able to be ahead of the game so that when, and I believe it will be when and not if, we get favorable candidates with good results, we will be able to make them available to the American public as I said to this committee months ago, within a year from when we started, which would put us at the end of this calendar year and the beginning of 2021. I'll stop there, Mr. Chairman, and be happy to answer questions later. Thank you.